Welcome back to the series. In our last video, we enabled these two buttons to connect to Stripe customer portal. And at the back end, we created this API connector and we added this external API to get the customer's billing portal. Now, this is mostly all set up. So all we have to do now, right click and duplicate it. And this is where we're going to change all our setup according to the Stripe API documentation so that we can bring in all our customer data onto the page. So now that being done, let's expand this guy, rename it. Okay, get most all customers. All right, and since this is a copy, you have to be careful because this also is now in action. But we're going to, like the last one, we actually kind of, you know, used it as an action from a button. But this one, we're going to just get the data and display them as a page load. So we have to set it back to data. Otherwise, the data source is not going to show up in our design window. Because when we set it to action, it shows up under workflows for events and when we set it up for a data it shows up in our design window as a data source that being done let's go check out the documentation once again okay so last time we went to portal right and the portal gave us this url and told us which method to use which was post this time let's go to customer and this is gonna be our URL. In this case, we're gonna be using this because post will create a customer and get will just simply get a customer, slash v1 slash customers. So our full URL will look like this guy right here. We just add api.stripe.com. So let's copy that and change this post to get and replace this with this guy right here the rest are going to be the same only these parameters we are no longer going to need with this setup let's reinitialize the call okay look all the customer data is right here all right so let's save that and now that our back end is ready Let's go back to design and this time let's bring it in. Actually, let's copy this first. Control C, Control V and let's go to layout and make it last. And here we're going to say Stripe customers. There you go. That being done. Now let's bring in our repeating group. And here, let's choose get moves all customers as a content type. And in here, we'll go to get external data from API. And in here, if we drop down, it shows up. See, this is where the data is coming from because we set it to data. If we set it to action, it wouldn't show up here. So it's a very important thing to remember. It baffled me before. So now we have a data source. And from the source, let's see what we're going to get is not the object, but data. And we're all set. Now let's do some cosmetic work. Let's remove the fixed row number. Keep it at 100 and uh, column wise, we're going to keep it fixed at 1. Remove the base styles. Let's go and give it a flat background color and choose something pretty. All right. And let's make it take out, take out the fixed width so that it fans end to end. Give it a width of 800 and center it. That being done. Maintain the min height as is and min width as is, no problem. Now looks like our repeating group is done. So 
let's start bringing in the text drop it right here oh yes we missed something let's click back here on the repeating group and change the fixed layout to a row layout because our data is going to sit side by side right all right so now everything is in place okay so let's uh, add customer id here and add some dynamic content let's stick to the id there you go you're coming in nicely now let's go to the layout From the top 20 pixel and the left 20 pixel let's do another preview okay looking pretty good now all we have to do let's highlight this control c control v and this time we will say change this id to let's say email and go here type in email preview there you go all our customer emails are here and now highlight this control c control v and this time let's grab a name and uh, come here name let's preview okay so this is a uh, kind of sort of breaking so let's go back to the rich text editor and have an enter here save it preview and there we go all the customer names are here one last thing we have to do here is that look uh, if we count we have only 10 of the customers showing up here so if we go back to the documentation and at pagination you actually see that there is a, a parameter called limit and by default the api will give you only 10 right and as we can see from here in my account altogether i have 17 results that means 17 customers right so let's go back to the back end expand everything and go down to our get all customers and here let's add a parameter called limit limit and let's limit it to 20 items and anytime you make a change you have to reinitialize the call okay if the data comes up that means it's working save it and now let's go back and refresh the page also look at it like our last customer is uh, athlete who come six so and still we have 10 of them now refresh now we have all 17 and you may notice there's uh, some empty names here because uh, these are demo data anyway and i was working on a like woocommerce slash wordpress project and also i had body press included so what it did it messed up some of the names it kind of did name and uh, and then username and all that added so api got confused because stripe api expecting a simple text like that so whenever simple text is there it picks up but whenever something is crazy looks like an object it just returns empty i mean these are demo anyway i mean i was gonna just delete them but uh, in most others as you can see here and here the names are all here these are all test users but the bottom line is we have just pulled in all our customer information straight from the stripe api using only bubble connector the idea behind it is like if we can do this that means 
in the future, we're going to go ahead and grab these guys and use uh, some sort of a logic to register them so that in our backend database, our customers will have this customer IDs anyway in the database at registration so they can just log in and find their own button. For example, here, logged in MooseDev and they click on it and they end up in their corresponding Stripe customer portal. That concludes this quick series. If you like this video, please smash the like button and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.